mates. That's right. All you shoeless and bruises. Nostalgia. It's a dangerous emotion to toy with. That's a risk a filmmaker takes any time Hollywood releases a new reboot or a movie version of an ages-old TV show. There are always strong emotions for and against the new release. This is the case for Rob Zombie's The Monsters. In short, I loved it. Rob, Mr. Zombie, good on you, mate. It's a beauty. I think it's a great tribute to a beloved TV series. The three principal characters, Lily, Herman, and the Count, are fresh versions of their old TV selves. Mannerisms and voice inflections of the old series characters, played by Sherry Moon Zombie, Jeff Daniel Phillips, and Daniel Roebuck, can clearly be seen and heard throughout the film. The movie captures a great 1960s vibe. The film is a prequel to the TV show, so there's no Marilyn nor Eddie. All in all, Rob Zombie's The Monsters captures the essence of the original series far better than either of the two remake TV series. First, The Monsters Today, which ran from 1988 to 1991. The series was set in the 1980s and felt forced most of the time with poor versions of our beloved characters. Then, in 2012, Hollywood tried to reboot The Monsters once again with a dramatic version. Mockingbird Lane, wherein all characters looked human and nothing like the universal monsters they were based on. This series was cancelled after the pilot was shot. In Rob Zombie's The Monsters, there's a candy color palette to the visuals which I feel enhances the 1960s vibe. Rob Zombie did this on purpose when he was denied shooting in black and white. I found it a lot of fun to watch and I will view it several more times throughout the Halloween season and add it to my annual must-see movies. My one criticism since the first day I saw still shots from the set to the present time after watching the movie, I saw no valid reason for the Count to have a mustache. A mate of mine asked me if I'd ever read the Dracula novel. I'll admit, I never read the ultimate source material for vampires, Bram Stoker's 1897 novel, Dracula. In the novel, much of what we get of Dracula's appearance is from the journal of Jonathan Harker, while he stays at the Count's castle. He writes that the Count is a tall, old man, clean-shaven, save for a long white mustache, and clad in black from head to foot, without a single speck of color anywhere about him. There's a lot of fan talk these days regarding staying true to source material. Bram Stoker based Count Dracula on 15th century royal Vlad Dracula. Bloody elf Vlad himself had a mustache. So, going back to the original source material for the Count, Rob Zombie is more true to the Count character than many Hollywood versions. The TV series was campy mildly cartoonish in dialogue as well as sound effects and visuals. If Rob Zombie's movie was viewed black and white, I feel more people might see it was done in a style true to the original. The Monsters can be seen on Netflix. It's also available on DVD and Blu-ray. One criticism of the DVD and Blu-ray release, there's no feature to view the film in black and white. But the Blu-ray does have over an hour of behind-the-scenes footage as you follow Rob Zombie and his crew shooting the film from the first day to the last. Rob, did you make a film in the spirit of the classic TV series? From me, pre to you, fair dinkum, mate. Now, for a shameless self-promoting plug from yours truly. If you do your mate pre a favor, and hit the like button and subscribe to the GNN Guerrilla News Network channel. I'd sure appreciate it. As always, thank you for inviting me into your world. My wish for you, have an AP day.